good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio. So today, I want to show you Stoutland V. This is another one of those that was not necessarily high on my list of we're definitely going to be getting a Pokemon V of this soon. But oh my goodness, this one looks amazing, and I love it. And this is exactly the kind of card that so many people are going to absolutely hate. Oh, it's going to be a fun one. Now, if we started with the basics here, I should mention, of course, that our translation comes from the lovely Antoine Boulet. By now, that's something you should probably assume because I will occasionally forget to say it. And starting off with the basics, we've got 210 HP, which honestly is not terribly impressive for a Pokemon V, but I don't know. I'm sure we'll be okay. We've got a retreat cost here of free, which actually really sucks because we don't get to use Air Balloon for free retreat. We also don't get to use Buff Padding, but remember that Cape of Toughness, because you're a basic non-GX, will do the same thing, so it's all right. And the weakness to fighting means you share a weakness with Pikachu and Zekrom, Eternatus V Max, and Crobat V. And frankly, it's not a weakness I like because enough people are going to be going after those Pokemon that even if they're not going after you, you are going to be caught in the crossfire, and that's a little bit sad. As for being a colorless Pokemon, there's nothing that amazing here, but you do still get powerful. I mean, not hitting for weakness here is, is great for various reasons. Well, well, for your opponents. We'll get there in a minute. But you do get powerful colorless energy, which could actually be genuinely relevant. So, you know, not all bad. What do we see here? Well, the first attack is the absolute star of this Pokemon is the reason why some people are going to love it and some people are going to absolutely despise it. Because what it does, free energy, 40 damage. Hang on a second, we'll see. Free energy, 40 damage. That sounds terrible. Well, yes. But if your opponent's basic Pokemon is knocked out by damage from this attack, take one more prize card. Oh. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> that sounds absolutely fine by me. This is ridiculous, ladies and gentlemen. Now, look, you're only doing 40 damage, but you're taking an extra prize. And... The, the biggest parallel I can find straight off the bat is there was actually a Natu back in Lost Thunder. No, I'm lying to you. Natu from Lost Thunder was relevant because it had Lost March. I'm thinking Natu from Roaring Skies because it had the Theta plus Ancient Trait. There were a few that had this and essentially if you took a KO, you took an extra prize. Now Natu's attack sucked. Two energy, 10 damage for each energy attached to your opponent's active, but you took an extra prize when you took a KO. So people played it. One of the other, the other really relevant Pokemon that had this particular Ancient Trait was Articuno. And Articuno for free energy, you flip three coins doing 40 damage for each head, 20 damage base. And that Articuno saw a bunch of play because you took extra prizes. Yes, there have been far more relevant Pokemon with this kind of ability in the past. I mean, Lugia was absolutely huge. That was the one if it had a plasma energy attached, you could attack. If it didn't, you couldn't. But also, when you took a KO, you took an extra prize. And we saw, you know, there was a world's winning deck with uh, Rayquaza Deoxys Legend because when you took a KO, you took an extra prize. Literally won Worlds back in 2011. And okay, fine, ADP does this too. The point is, every time there is a mechanic, be it an ability, an attack, whatever, that allows a Pokemon to take extra prizes, people get excited and try and build around it. And they should! Because that's how you win games. You win games by taking six prizes faster than your opponent. Yes, I know there are other win conditions. So you know what? Go for it. That is the kind of thing you want to be doing here. Sounds like fun to me, ladies and gentlemen. Now, the questions are, are many fold. How do you get the energy on? What are you actually KOing, etc.? But we have answers. I mean, the thing that makes me interested here is that Articuno was really used against Night March because you had Joltik coming in with a paltry 30 HP and the other main attacker here was Pumpkaboo that came in with a Woo slightly better 60 
But in reality, one heads on Articuno would KO either of them. It didn't make a huge difference. And Articuno was there to try and win the prize race against Night March. Well, this is here for Mad Party. Because what are we attacking with in a Night March deck? Or it's not Night March anymore, is it? What are we attacking with in a Mad Party deck? Bunnelby. And Bunnelby comes along and has 40 HP. So if you attack a Bunnelby, you will get a KO. What is pretty much the only other attacker in Mad Party? Poltygeist. Poltygeist has 60 HP, but as we're going to see in a minute, powerful colorless energy will work here. And then you're up to 60, and then you're getting a KO on Poltygeist. And maybe Mad Party can still outspeed Stoutland. But the other thing to remember is that Poltygeist does evolve from Sinistee. And sinister has got 30 HP. So, um, yeah. If you go second with Stoutledge, you're probably going to win in three turns. This is relevant. Now, in terms of the energy, we've got Welder, which is probably my preferred route at the moment. Remember, you're not an evolved Pokemon, so you can't use Triple Acceleration. And you are a Pokemon V, so you cannot use Twin Energy. But Welder will work nicely here. That will be fine. I mean... Thank goodness that new Cherim doesn't work on Pokemon with a rule box. Or else Cherim here would be a donk. But it doesn't because you're a Pokemon V. You've got a rule box. But any way to accelerate energy whatsoever will work. And the reason I like Welder so much is you Welder to Fire Energy. Then you attach a powerful Colorless Energy. And oh look, now you're hitting 60. And I know that there's too many 70 HP Pokemon around at the moment. Pokemon like Jirachi, Pokemon like Galarian Zigzagoon. But come on, is it really that difficult to play your own Galarian Zigzagoon? Play Vitality Band? And I really think you should here, just so we're clear. I really think both of them are huge. Although you may instead wish to play Cape of Toughness to put you out of range of Azashium. Assuming they haven't used ADP's GX attack, because if they have, they'll still get a KO even with your Cape of Toughness, which is, you know, Boo Hiss, etc. So my point here is you should be hitting 70 fairly reliably. Welder, powerful colorless energy, and either Vitality Band or Galarian Zigzagoon, you're hitting 70 damage. That's two prizes off of Jirachi. That's two prizes off of Galarian Zigzagoon. That's two prizes off the vast majority of evolving Pokemon. I keep telling you how much I love Excadrill. Well, you know what's got 70 HP? Drillba. That's not fun. I mean, to be fair, they're one hit KOing you for a single energy. You're probably still going to lose to Excadrill. At least you really should. But still, taking those two prizes early can make a real big difference. My point here is, yes, the 40 damage is low, but you can build up to it. Now, as for the second attack, we got four energy, 200 damage to your opponent, 30 damage to yourself. Cool. 200 damage is actually kind of perfect here. Now here you might not want the powerful colorless energy. You might not want the vitality band. Because 200 damage brings almost, if we take Steelix and Waylord out, and they really are the exceptions, it brings every other Pokemon V into one hit, well, into two hit KO range, into BKO'd next attack range. Although there are still a bunch of really annoying ones out there like Crobat that will actually be KO'd by this attack normally, which is genuinely sad. Because what you're trying to aim for here, what your goal is here, is bring them into KO range with the second attack and then finish them off with the first. I don't want to take two prizes off of a Zashium. I want to take three prizes. Two hit KOing Zashians to win means you'll win in four attacks. That's nice. That's really nice. You do still run into the issue of VMAXs just, just being out of range. Like something like an Eternatus, you're just legitimately two hit KO with a second attack. Because uh, you, you're too far away, right? You're just, you're just not getting the, the damage here. And that's really sad. But... Stoutland's literally playing colorless energy and is a basic Pokemon. Play something else, like anything else. I'm sure you'll be fine. I genuinely, legitimately love this Pokemon. I think Stoutland is absolutely great. And I don't think it's the easiest Pokemon to use, incidentally. But should it be? You'll notice that one of the trends we really see through the history of the Pokemon trading card game 
is that when you have these Pokemon that take extra prizes, they tend to be a little bit more awkward, as they should be. I mean, you can get all kinds of fancy here. You can play around with things, you know, if you're playing a fire deck, play around with Volcarona to drop extra damage counters, or play around with Flapple. And I'm doing that thing where I haven't mentioned Flapple for weeks, and now I mentioned it in three videos today, which is weird. I suppose once I get it in my mind, I end up mentioning it more often. But my point is, there are plenty of weird, dumb combos you can do to try and get damage on the board and then finish off with Stoutland. You don't ever need to use Stoutland's second attack. You can just use a bunch of other stuff. Play a fire deck. Play like any other attacker. Just make sure you leave them 40 damage away from being KO'd and bring in Stoutland. Also, do remember this only works on basic Pokemon. So when I give the example of Drillber, remember that Excadrill will never be giving up two prizes. When I give the example of Eternatus V Max, remember that even if you could KO V Maxes with Stoutland's first attack, you still wouldn't get the extra prize. It is only when you KO a basic Pokemon. Let's make that really clear straight off the bat. But I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen. Basics are a large part of the format. And even Evolved Pokemon have to start off as basics. And I don't know whether you'll be making a deck which is entirely Stoutland. But it's colourless energy which can be put into any deck whatsoever. Tell me people aren't going to try and use this. Because every time we see this before, it's been used. I'm giving this five Wossies. I think people are going to break this card. I really do. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I honestly feel alright with that. But I look at this and I think, well, straight off the bat, you are going to be absolutely, you know, decks like Mad Party. If Stoutland sees any kind of play, Mad Party is no longer a viable deck. This will destroy Mad Party straight off the bat. It's a colorless Pokemon that can fit into any deck. And I really do think an awful lot of decks are just going to just sneak in a Stoutland just to go, you know what? This could be the difference between me winning and me losing. And now I think back to my run through a Pokemon White that I'm currently going through. And I haven't actually gone all the way up to Stoutland. I evolved into Herdia and left it. And now I'm thinking, well, after seeing this card, maybe I do want a Stoutland. I don't know. I think this is a great card. But I'd like to know what you think. So let me know in the comment section. Would you go nuts? Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. Money's Ross, and you've been watching. PTCG Radio.